I am like apocalyptically excited for this theme. Last year when we did a pride theme, I went with pride flags, and while I liked the concept, I didn't really nail the execution. Certainly wasn't helped by putting the wrong header on every weekly spread. But we're back with another pride theme. This one is Love is Love Potions. So a little bit of a play on words, but one of my main aims for this is to not make it look too Halloween-y. That's not what I'm about for this month. I'm not doing a Halloween setup. Though you could, of course, use the theme we're gonna do and put it in October for Halloween, but that's the challenge. Not making it look Halloween-y. Anyway, let's get into it. Before we jump into setting up June, just taking a look at May. So in May we had the projects list, which I found super helpful, so we'll be keeping that again. The Dutch door cover page with the little pandas, which is pretty cute. We had my challenge, which I'm a little behind on, but this was to fill in something that I'm grateful for each day. We have my actions list broken down into monthly tasks, weekly tasks, and daily tasks. Over the page, we had the calendar style monthly log, again with our little pandas. I enjoyed having the separated boxes in this one, and I thought that having them in different colors was pretty cute. After this one, we have the JNR book club page, where we've got some information about the book, and then we've got the chapters of the book, and I can fill them in as I read them. As you can see, I have a fair bit of my book to go. The May Reflection, which I haven't filled in completely yet because the month isn't over. And then after this, we have the Notes and Tasks page, which I've mainly been using for our secret words. In terms of the secret word that we have for this video, that one is bright. After this, we're into the weekly pages though. So our first weekly was just the single spread. After this, I put in a brain dump for my weekly reset process and a kind of tracker slash scheduler for my tutor times with my tutor class. We have another weekly, which we changed the style up a little bit, but again, just a single spread. After this one, we have a space for my home working wish list, which is effectively like a content creator wish list slash home office wish list. A blank page here, which I might use for my weekly reset brain dump. And then we're on to our current weekly, or the one that I'm currently using, which we put a Dutch door on. After this, we have left two blank pages, or rather two blank spreads, that I can set up my next weekly on. And now we're into June. So as you can see, I already have everything penciled in. And while typically during my monthly setups, I like to work through page by page, today we're going to try something a little bit different, and we're going to go element by element, which is kind of a little bit more akin to how I typically like to plan in my journal. If I wasn't filming Plan With Me's, I probably wouldn't work through page by page. It would be more like draw in all the black outlining, then put in all the color, etc. The idea here is that I want this plan with me to be a little bit more like a tutorial on how to set this up if you wanted to do it yourself. So a bit more instructional in the way that I'm presenting it. If you like this style or if you have any other feedback, please do leave it in the comments below as we go through. So the first thing that I am going to pin in are going to be these leafy designs that you might be able to see around my header. For these, I'm going to be using two different sizes of black pen. So the 04 micron, which is a 0.4 millimeter nib, and the 005, which is a 0.2 millimeter nib. The thicker one is going to be for the main outlining, so drawing the stem and drawing the outside of the leaf, whereas our thinner one is going to be for detailing work. When it comes to drawing these leaves, all I'm doing really is putting down a curved line, which is the stem of the leaf, and then drawing kind of like a teardrop coming from one end. So you can see we effectively have a teardrop with a line running through it. I find that drawing the stem in first just makes it a little bit easier to actually get the leaf to point in the direction I want it to, and to get it to fit the space around my lettering nicely. Once I've got the thicker lines in, I then can go in with the thinner of our two pens and draw in some detailing work. And these details are really simple, they're just lines that go up one side of the leaf, in particular pointing away from the bottom of the stem. So from the center, outwards to the edge, and I try to keep them at a fairly even interval. It's alright if they're not perfectly even, as long as they roughly point in the same direction. I find that using the thinner pen just gives it a little bit more visual interest. It makes the leaves feel less flat, even though they aren't super realistic. They're still pretty stylized, but it's just another element to make it stand out. 
I'll keep the lines fairly straight or maybe with a very slight bend in them to make it look like the leaf is a little more three-dimensional or kind of like it's got some movement or like bending in the wind. Also in this style, it's not super important to have the diagonal lines on both sides of the leaf meet at the same place on the stem. A lot of the times they do, just naturally, because I'm using a similar spacing, but it's not necessary. I'm not actively trying to make them meet at the middle. Some of the other decorative elements that I decided to put around my headers are these kind of little curved teardrop shapes and the little stars. For the curve, I find it easiest to start at the pointed end and then work my way around back to it. And for the stars, typically I find it easiest to start on the left, then go up to the right, down, and then back to the left. So drawing in a star, again with a thicker nib that I'm using. So starting on the left and going up, just in a little curve, and then curving down to the right, trying to make sure that the curves look fairly symmetrical to each other. Then curving down to the bottom, again, trying with the whole symmetry thing, and back up to the left. Again, it's not so much of a big deal if they aren't perfect, but I do pencil them in first to make sure they're in the right shape. Chuck all our little stars in now. And then putting in those little droplet kind of shapes. So for all of these, I've kind of tried to make them curve around the letters or other elements that I've got. So this is where that decoration ends up, and then I'll go in and put the lettering in. But as we said, I'm trying to do all of the similar elements at once here, so I'm gonna go and put my leaves, stars, and little droplets on all of my other pages first. So chucking in those tiny lines on the little leaf we have here. The other leaves that are on this page I'm not putting in just yet, just because they have to sit either behind or in front of the little potion bottles we're gonna be putting in. And I kind of want to do those at the same time, just to make sure I don't overextend a line somewhere I'm not supposed to, or something like that. Flipping back to our project list and cover page, I'm now going to go and put in my cover page decoration. And in particular, I'm going to start with the little rope that we have holding the little label here. Might be a little tricky to see but I want to put that in first because it sits on top of the bottle design. So I want to put in the rope and the label, then the bottle, and then the stuff that sits behind it. I find that when drawing like this, working from most forward elements to most back or furthest away elements, just to be a little bit easier. It also kind of safeguards myself against accidentally putting in lines where they shouldn't go. For instance, if I were to draw in, say, these leaves first, I might accidentally extend them into where the bottle is supposed to be. Whereas if I work from top down, so rope, bottle, background elements, I'm less likely to do that. To draw on the rope, we're going to use the same pens again, so outlining with the thicker one and then fine lining with the finer one. And that rope shape is effectively just made up with a bunch of S kind of curves. So an S like that. And then you do the same thing underneath it. And the same thing again. And it just kind of keeps going. You can see with just the outline, it does look a little bit odd. But once we go and add in those details with the finer pen, it'll look a lot better. We'll put in the sides of this little label. Go. And now I'm going to take that finer pen and add in our detailing. And the details here really just go from wherever there's a pointed section on each section of rope. It's kind of hard to describe, but effectively, if I draw some in for you, little lines coming from here and the slightly pointed section on the other side. And just by doing those little lines coming out of both of those sections, it does make it look a little bit more like rope. And the nice part is, by putting these in, you kind of hide any of the messiness that we had in the initial outlining. If you wanted a more in-depth rope tutorial, I do have that one on a separate video, which you can find linked in the description box below. There we go, so it looks a little bit more like rope now. For the potion bottle, because I do want it to be fairly well-rounded, or kind of very much circular, I am going to use a circle stencil for this. The circle stencil I'll be using is this Helix Circle Maker, just because this circle here for the bottom of our potion bottle is eight centimeters in diameter. And I know I can use this one to get circles with up to 10 centimeters in diameter. 
In terms of the pen that I'm going to use for this one, I'm going to use a Micron again, but I am going to use a thicker one, so the 08 or 0.5 millimeter nib. Just because this is a lot bigger than the other decorative elements that I've got, I kind of want it to stand out, but I still want to use a waterproof pen because the color that I'm going to end up putting down here is going to be with my Tombow markers, and those ones are water-soluble inks. So just lining up this center mark with the center mark of my page that I've marked out, and then just picking the circle along here that I need to use. I think I'm gonna go with that one. Of course, when I sketched this in, I just did it by eye. I didn't actually use a circle stencil. So my outlining might be a little bit off compared to what is to be expected. Of course, if you didn't have a circular stencil, at this point you could just use any circular object. So the bottom of a glass or a cup. If you had a particularly large roll of sticky tape, that could be pretty good. I've seen people use washi tape rolls as a way to draw circles in their notebook. Really anything circular that you can hold onto your page and trace around the outside of. Stopping where we get to that tag so that we don't go over into the tag. And then also curving around here and doing that side as well. Make sure that we use the right one. One, two, three, four in from the end. One, two, three, four. There we go. Excellent. So you can see I stopped this one just a little shy of that rope because I want to curve it upwards to make the neck of our bottle. Go. And some right here on this side. The neck is just a straight line, which is nice and easy to do. And because I've got that penciled in guideline, it makes it even easier again. For the top of the bottle, this is effectively a long rectangle with rounded edges. So we can draw that one in. And it goes all the way across the top, down the side. And then I'm gonna leave it slightly open here just to kind of mimic that glassware effect. And we can also draw in the cork that is going to be like our bottle stopper. And that comes down into the bottle. And we're just leaving that slight gap on either side to show that this is glassware. So it does have that slight separation. Now, when it comes to the potion inside the bottle, we are again going to use this circle maker, put it back into the center. And we don't want to use the size that we just used. We want to use one that's a little bit in from this, again, to show that kind of glass effect. Having that separation between the liquid that we're going to draw and the outside of the bottle. And I'm going to start mine here. So you can see I've only drawn it up to here because this is effectively where my liquid's going to start. And just following my pencil line, it's going to curve down to the side here. And this here is the top surface of the liquid. When it comes to penning in the internal lines that I've sketched out, for those ones we're going to switch from our thicker pen to our, well, what's now going to be our medium size pen. So the 04 or 0.4 millimeter nib and draw in those internal lines. This makes up part of the decoration for that whole love is love potions. So the pattern we're going to put in here is to represent one of the pride flags. In particular, I've chosen to do the bisexual pride flag. So pink, purple, and blue. To make our cork look like an actual cork, I'm just going to go in with that thicker pen, so the 08, and add in some dots to the lower part of this, just coming up to that line for this rectangle that we drew in before, but not going beyond it. And we'll also do the same in this top section here. Dot, dot, dot. If you wanted to, you could get pretty detailed with your dots here. You could really kind of put sections of lots of dots to make it look shadowed and sections with the dots further apart to make it look like the place where the light is hitting. I'm just putting in dots until I feel like I've got enough. No real rhyme or reason as to where they go, pretty even coverage of those dots. So really outside of the rope here with those really fine lines, the majority of the penning on this page here is done with that 08 and 04. So the thicker one for outlining and the 04 for detailing. We're going to continue with our detailing here, so we're going to add a line inside of this rectangle just to make it look a little bit more 3D-esque. And then I'm going to use the 08 to do our outside decoration. Very much just doing these ones in exactly the same way as we did the ones over there. These ones are a little bit bigger, so it does require a slightly steadier hand to get them in, but I think it's coming together pretty well.
And now for those internal lines on our leaves, I'm gonna be using that 04 pen. So what was previously considered to be our thicker pen when we were doing the smaller leaves, but because we're doing bigger leaves here, we need to use thicker pens for both the outside lines and the inside lines. These detailing lines are the most time consuming part, but honestly, when they're all in, I think it does look a lot better. It's fairly simple to do, like they are just diagonal lines coming from that center kind of stem, but when you put them in, it just looks a lot more visually appealing. In my opinion, anyways. You could of course leave them out if you were in a bit more of a hurry. While previously I went in with the 04 to do the outlining of our little label here, I think it kind of gets a little bit lost compared to the other decoration, so I'm gonna go and thicken up that line with the 08. Now as we have the cover decoration done and the leaves around all of our headers are done, we are going to flip over and add some more decoration and that is the little bottle designs. So you can see that I've drawn these little bottles out already, so you can kind of see what our end product is going to be, but I need to draw these guys up the side of this page and up the side of this one. Again, when I'm doing this I'm trying to work from front to back, so for instance down here I'll start with the bottle because the bottle is in front of the leaf designs. Because these bottles are a little bit smaller than the one we had on our cover page though, I can instead use my Stettler circle stencil and in particular I think for these ones I'll probably be using maybe the 25 millimeter for the outside ring and then the 23 for the internal one for the liquid. And because we're back to the smaller design, we're gonna go back in with the 04 and the 005 micron. But to keep it simple, we're gonna do all of the 04 work first. With those ones done, we now need to do the same thing on the other side for these bigger ones. But first, we're actually gonna go and put in the washi tape for our little tabs here. To keep up our theme, I've just selected these three metallic washi tapes. So the pink, the purple, and the blue, because that's what we're gonna color in all of our little potions with. So pink, purple, blue. And sticking it in so that it lines up with the cutaway edge and fully covers the tab. And we'll just do the same on these ones and then cut away the excess. Here we go. We have one, two, three, and on the back we have the same pink, purple, blue. On to our potions. These ones are a little bit bigger, but they're not as big as the ones on the cover, so I'm just going to use the same combination of pens. Now as my hand is sufficiently sore, the decorative part is done in terms of like the doodly stuff, but what we do need to go in and add is our lettering. So starting on the projects list, we are going to be putting in our header. This one I'm going to do with the 04 again, and it's effectively just outlining the letters. For this one I am going to turn my notebook just to make it a little bit easier for myself. So us on an angle here and then just outlining the pencil lines that we've got in here. Now while in my sketch out of the letters the upstrokes are really thin I am going to have a slight separation there because I'm going to want to add in some color that is in the same colors as our potion bottles. I've heard it been said that when you're doing this type of lettering where you're outlining the letters you very much need to treat it like a picture rather than like the letters Otherwise you won't follow your guidelines, you're going to follow what your brain automatically thinks letters should look like. If you saw my sketching in video for this one, you'll know how long this actually takes me. It takes me a ridiculous amount of time to do this type of lettering, because getting the placement of the letters just right is something that I find challenging. With the cursive headers in, it's now time to add in our other main lettering style. I like to pair the more decorative lettering with something a bit simpler, so when it comes to my weekly spreads, I don't have to spend all that time and effort doing this more decorative one. And that's going to be a simple serif. 
For my serif lettering, I'm going to be using the 05 micron, which is a 0.45 millimeter tip, which is a 0.45 millimeter tip, not one that we've used in this setup yet. And we'll just start here on the cover page with our June header. I find the easiest way to do any kind of simple serif lettering is to take regular block letters, so regular capitals, and then just add the tiny flicks to the ends of those letters. A nice easy way to know where to actually place them is going and having a look at a reference font like Times New Roman, just typing out the words that you want and seeing where those serifs are placed. This isn't the only place that I have that lettering though, we also need to put it on our calendar here, and we're going to want to put it on our June in review page. So these are just for the initials for each of the days of the week. And the spacing on each of these letters is approximately one centimeter by one centimeter. And then flipping over to the June in review. Now, as you can tell for my June in review, the cursive and JNR book club, the cursive again, we do have a drop shadow on that lettering. So we are gonna put that in, but before we get into cracking out the Tombos, we are gonna have to go and erase my pencil lines. This is gonna be a long and tedious process, so let's speed it up. Before editing, this is literally eight solid minutes of me just erasing pencil lines on my page. Normally in my plan with me videos, I actually cut out my erasing because it doesn't really seem like the most entertaining content to watch. But if you'd prefer that I keep it in, just let me know. Now we're getting into the stage of adding color. And the first color we're gonna add is gray. <laughs> That's because we're gonna go and put in our drop shadows around the letters. Personal preference, when I do a drop shadow, I like the shadow to be lower and to the right. So if this is the shadow and that's the lettering, kind of like that. Putting drop shadows in the right place does take a fair bit of practice. I personally still need to practice, but if we take P for instance, I'm gonna put my shadow slightly to the right and slightly lower than where the letter actually is. So for instance, on this thick downstroke section, we're gonna add a stripe of gray down this side and at the bottom as well. And then up the side of this part here but not down the left hand side. We're going to move over to the right and add it down there. One thing I found could be helpful for placing drop shadows in the right place is jumping onto a word processor like Microsoft Word, downloading a free cursive font like this one, and then type out the word you want, highlight the text and press on the shadow option, just so that then you can see where they place the shadows and gives you a rough guideline of where you can put yours. And flipping over to our June header, I'm doing the same here. For the drop shadowing that I'm doing on this one, I'm using the Tombow N75 pen. And I'm just going over the pen a couple of times to darken up that shadowing. The nice part about using a lighter color for the shadowing is that if you do put it in the wrong place, it's not super noticeable. And you can just darken up the areas where you actually do want the shadow. And over to the back where we've got the notes page. Now at this stage in terms of our headers, you could just leave them there, leave them not filled in. I think they look pretty all right, but I am going to be adding some color. In particular, as we've said, I'm gonna be using the colors of the bisexual pride flag, so pink, blue, and purple. And while we add this color in, we're also gonna add color to our potion bottles. Depending on what theme you're going for, you can of course use any color palette, but the colors I'm going for are the pink 725, the purple 685 and the blue 535. While in the potion bottles, I've sectioned off where I want each of those areas of color to go. In the lettering, I'm just going to effectively have the top part of the letter be pink, middle purple, bottom blue. I kid you not, I just checked the length of the footage for the coloring section of this and it literally took me like 50 minutes to color in all of the potions and all of the headers. Although time consuming, I totally think it was worth it. I really love how they turned out, but oh my Lord. <laughs> if it wasn't already super obvious, this is not the type of layout that you do when you are in a time pinch. This is the kind of thing you might wanna do when you're feeling a little bit fancy, wanna get a little bit more decorative with things. The decorations themselves are fairly straightforward once you know the general shapes to use. And as I've said previously, I think they look really visually effective. So we have our color in now for all of our headers that needed color. 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of detailing to this just with a white gel pen. This is to make the text look a little bit more three-dimensional, so kind of like a bubble lettering. To add in those white highlights, we're using a white gel pen and I'm going to be using the Archer and Olive one. And it's effectively only putting it on the thicker parts of each of the letters, just a stripe down the side, maybe a couple of dots. I put mine in slightly to the left of each of those thicker sections of our letters, which kind of matches having the drop shadow on the right hand side. You can see it's not a huge change to the lettering that we had before, but there is a slight difference and I think it just adds a little something. I'm going to add a similar thing in our bottle here, just taking care with the positioning of this one to keep it pretty much equally distance from the edge and cutting through those lines making sure that the gel pen is 100% dry before we turn over the page. So our headers are now finished and I think they're looking pretty damn cool. <laughs> but now it's time to go and add in all of the kind of internal stuff on the pages or the non-header, non-decorative parts. And we will start with the notes page because it's honestly gonna be the easiest. For this, all I'm gonna do is put in some gray lines. So every second line on here is gonna be in gray. And we're just using that same gray Tombow, the N75, but we're only gonna go over it once this time rather than multiple times like we did for the drop shadow. Turning the book because it makes it a little bit easier to put this stuff in and we'll work from the bottom to the top because I know I want that last one to be in gray. When I put in these dividing lines, I try to keep my wrist steady, so not twisting my wrist as I put in the lines, but rather holding my hand and wrist pretty much rigid and then dragging my entire arm towards myself. This just helps me achieve lines that are a lot straighter than I would be able to achieve otherwise. They aren't going to turn out perfect, but I do kind of like the more hand-drawn look at them. With the spacing that I've used, I've made it so that when the Dutch door is closed, I don't actually see any of those gray lines. It's only when you open it that you'll actually be able to see any of them. So my decorative panel here kind of extends a little bit further than the Dutch door is cut. Flipping back the JNR book club page, I'm not going to add anything to just yet because we haven't decided on the book, but what will be included here will be the book title, the genre, the author, and a little summary of the chapters. By summary, I really just mean checklist, so I can tick them off as I read the chapters. Kind of like a book tracker. For our June in review though, I have already penciled in the different sections I want, so I'm gonna go pen those in now. And I think for the headers, I'm gonna use the O4 again. For the lettering for each of these headers, I just decided to use that serif font, just in a smaller style, because I only wanted these headers to take up one row of dots. The sections that we have on this page are the things that I accomplished in the month, the challenges that I faced in the month, anything that helped or hindered me in terms of reaching my goals. We have a space for things that I'm looking forward to for the month ahead, things I'm nervous about for the month ahead. And then at the bottom, we've got a little space to rate how I'm going in each of my two goals. And I've split this one up on a weekly basis. Flipping back to the monthly log, for this one we need to put in all the calendar boxes and I'm going to be utilizing my Tombos to make these boxes colored. But before that, I'm gonna go and put in the spaces for the numbers for each of the days of the month. For this, I'm gonna be using my Zig Clean Colored Dot Marker. You don't need to have this tool specifically. You can just draw in some little circles with any color really. But I'm gonna put these dots at the top left corner of each of the boxes. While those are drying, before we add the numbers to those, we're gonna go and outline the boxes. For this, I'm gonna use all three of the colors that we have from our bisexual pride flag. I'm also gonna use black and I'm gonna use gray. In particular for these, I'm gonna be using the bullet end to do the outlining of the box. And the box outline is going to go towards that top left corner, but not actually touch it. Because I think it'll look a little odd if I have these three in the order of the flag and then these two just randomly together. I'm going to interdisperse them and I think I'll put the gray next to the blue and the black next to the pink and purple. And also to make it so that we don't just end up with stripes of color, so a column of pink boxes, black, purple, yeah yeah yeah, I'm going to offset every subsequent row by two boxes. So this one will be pink and then rather than have that one pink it's going to be two over and so on and so forth. 
So we'll go and put all the pink ones in first. And with the outlining done, we can add those numbers and I'm just gonna use the 04 again. It looks so freaking good. I'm like so excited about this. And for the projects page, we just need to go and add in the titles for each of those sections. Again, using the 04 size micron and that serif font. Now, as my hand is 100% dead, <laughs> it's time to have a look at what we've done. So we have the projects list sectioned into the different areas that I have projects for. The cover page, which is really just a decorative page. The monthly log, which is that calendar style, has a space up the top here to put in a quote once I decide what I want my quote for the month ahead to be. We have the challenge page and the actions list. This one I'm going to be changing the style of. and I haven't quite thought it through, but I will be putting it in my 90 day goals video, which is coming up soon. The challenge I'm yet to decide how I want to track, but I'm thinking if I get around to it, I might draw in 30 little potion bottles. Flipping over, we've got the JNR Book Club Tracker, which once we decide what the book of the month is, I'll write in the title, genre, and author, and then put in a tracker for the chapters of the book. We have the June in Review page with our different sections to help me reflect on the month that was, and then the notes section with those dividing lines. Ah, it turned out so well! I'm so excited to use the month ahead. I love the color palette. I really think that limiting it just to the bisexual pride flag colors made it so much easier to tie all of the pages together with a cohesive setup. But like we said, you could of course do this one with any color palette. If you are looking for more inspiration for monthly setups, do be sure to check out the playlist we have at the top here. Or if you're looking for June in particular, the playlist at the bottom might be more your speed. As always team, thank you for watching and until next time, bye.